what's up my people how now they waiting they happen waiting this up guys um i know you guys have some of you have seen the news making the rounds on social media about are they doing now i always like to tell people that care to listen that wherever you are going make sure you tell someone you know that person might be a friend family friend or family but tell someone the reason why they were able to trace this murder in the first place was because Adegoke told his family where he is going. Always put that in mind. Well, this one was so obvious that I could not be denied. Because the first thing they told it was to deny that it was not even a lodger. Until luckily the guy told people where he was going. So they have a record of his movements and when he checked in. That is the first room for suspicion. Adi Doing is the owner of a hotel, and I think he's also the founder of Oduduwa University. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But um, this person, the receptionist, Adi Deji, Adi Shola, um, at Hilton Hotel in a lay fair where Adi Goke was killed um, in Ocean State, has been sentenced to two years imprisonment. You know Adi, um, you know Adi Doing was sentenced to death by hanging, actually. Uh, so... The receptionist too was found guilty. According to reports, they said this receptionist was paid um two hundred thousand naira monthly just to keep her mouth shut. She was found guilty of conspiracy to fabricate um or cover up evidence and conceal the fact that Timothy Adegoke, a former postgraduate student, has stayed at the hotel before his death. The sentencing was delayed until Wednesday due to pleas for leniency from both the defense and prosecution. Now, the hotel owner and two other staff members had previously been sentenced to death for their um, involvement in Adegoke's murder. Like I said earlier, now the court considered the defendant's age, you know, circumstances and pleas for leniency in handing down the sentence. You know, so she's she's lucky, I would say. Yeah, she's lucky. So this was written, I'm going to read it out, uh, by one Tijani Alabi Fatai. Uh, it says that he owns a university. He owns a hotel. He was a top contender for the honor of Ife kingship, yet is deep into ritual killings. It was a murder too many as he snuffed out lives of unsuspecting customers without being caught he even recruited his son and staff in his uh, dastardly act killing without getting caught and dispatching his victims in shallow graves but he gets caught yet his pride and arrogance would, won't even let him be seen in a police vehicle he appears in court in chilled exotic cars instead of the hot black maria when caught to the dock for cross-examination, he refused, saying his lawyers have said everything needed to be said. It was this same arrogance that nailed him. In detention, he continued to live like a king, calling the shots. Meanwhile, he haunts the families of the victim. Uh, the journalists on his case were threatened. Today, he gets served to be hanged by the neck until his life is snuffed. Is snuffed. Prince Rahman Adedoin, a cancer in our society in fact they said the hotel is popular for that i'm talking about news about you know unexplained disappearance of people or customers and yet nobody <laughs> did anything even the government of ocean state should be questioned about this hotel anyways guys let us watch this video there were some times that there were fears that perhaps the, no, the, the, the accused no. could escape justice yeah. No, actually, the, for those who live around that area, the hotel is notorious, according to them, for disappearances. Maybe mm -hmm. I can use that. But this one was so obvious that it could not be denied. Because the first thing the hotel did was to deny that it was not even a lodger. Until luckily the guy told people where he was going. So they have a record of his movement and when he checked in. That is the first room for suspicion. The second of course was that every effort was made to make sure this did not go to trial. Even at the point the police in that area were assumed to be complicit in whatever is causing the delay. But I must commend those who took the battle personally. Some young men on social media decided to dedicate their time to this and the, and the lawyers mm. also went out of their way 
Because sometimes it's not really convenient. Because sometimes the man will not be, for, for the man to even be caught. Okay, why? And then a lot of postponements, the normal technical aspects of the case. But the judge did very well. Because, like I said, the evidence was overwhelming. Because normally, three things, anybody who knows anything about business, is the first thing is that if something like this happens on your premises, you must immediately report it. Report it. Mm. That's the first thing. Why were you trying to yeah. bury the person? Yeah. Why? Why you bury without the informing the police? Mm. They are denying that the person was ever on the premises. As they are not going to go, I am sure it's going to appeal. But this, as of today, gives hope to the common man. You know, the I did doing um, shocked me by the way he went about this matter. He refused to get into the dock for his testimony to be taken. So what is the meaning of that? According to um, this man, the journalist Ovi Yomi Amzat, this man, I would uh, uh, give him his flowers. He actually championed this alongside Just Lover who gave him the platform and also spread this to a larger um, audience. Now, this um, Ovi Yomi Hamzat explained in Yoruba how he was killed. In fact, he said there was a CCTV camera. That the CCTV caught them that this man was even there himself. They walked into the guy's room, you know, killed him there, tied, wrapped him, and carried him into the vehicle. <laughs> CCTV, I want to party color. CCTV, what you reveal there for what time to work party motive? Oh, I go make it. I didn't want to wallet. I want to wallet. My suit to Jalla Bassi Sapo. I love Bassi Sapo. I did do it. Two more domains, Jeru Sela be teller. My suit, you wallet. I did do it. Wallet. I'm drawing. Oh, my dear, do it. Two more loan white. I do that. Oh, no, wallet. I didn't wear your hair. What why no room to add do you want? I no room to see what you want. What wobe? You bat you want wobe? Lay be a coco dear. I want caca. I won't ever pay one key with CCTV in no room. So lay be a coco dear. What daddy? That's a my daddy. What if you could get to motive? What if car want to date? What if you near a saw? I saw a telling ye. One white basin of Pali, one to one half yoke, one day Pali, one white basin in boots, one to. Ari must shoot. Ari, I did do him for Ari. I did he, I draw him. Oh, my doctor, I did do him. And where you're telling me, yo. One day to what you say, you must. One day, what that day? Near Gomechi, Lauru, no one party, what you see. CCTV, that better fool. We saw it in the boy. Oh, my two dead receptionists here. For Simbe, you got to one party motive. Ah, you call one less. Should not two hundred thousand to Umba. Oh, whoa, oh, what to Umba and Tier. Oh, whoa, say no man. We go to Bachelet. My Jenica called Bob. Oh, what to Umba and Tier. I want Abdraim. I want Esther. I don't want Masudi. Masudi, not to Sado. Masudi to Sado. Masudi. But I did not even know what say. Oh, I want to look at one more shooting by. I want to look at Esther. I want to look at one Abdurahim. I want to look at that. What you want to go go ahead. We go ahead. We pick up my kick. We pay one wa. Moving on to the next one. Now, the trial of Chidima Ujuku, the main suspect in the murder case of Super TV boss um, Osifo, was postponed at the Lagos High Court due to the absence of her lawyer. Now, Chidima's lawyer requested to be excused from the proceedings due to his health issues and unavailability of our junior lawyers to represent her. The case has been adjourned until June 8. Now, Chidima, um, along with another person and her sister, is facing charges of murder, forgery, and stealing. She was arrested in June 2021. And um, the Adedohi's case happened in November 2021. Uh, this both cases were huge, or still huge though. Been on this case for a while. The director of Public Prosecutions, 
uh, told the court that she got a message from Chidima's counsel, Mr. Aung Ka Egu, that he was, he was ill. She said that the counsel also mentioned that his junior lawyers would not be able to appear in the case owing to their engagement in other court matters. Uh, the judge, however, told, I mean, the DPP, however, told the court that her own witness, who was to give evidence, was present in court. The second and third defendants' counsels um, were present in court and raised no objections to the absence of the first defendants' counsel. Justice Adesanya subsequently adjourned the case. In the meantime, at the last adjourned date on May the 4th, the court had admitted in evidence. Moving on to the next one here, we have um, the news about the fuel pump price. It has now increased to, it is now 537 per litre. 537 naira per liter. It's crazy. It's an official statement released by NNPCL. Uh, even Tatcha reacted to this. I think they were Savage reacted to this. I also saw a guy on the street, a keke driver, who also, you know, reacted uh, to that. They, they were like a lot of videos, you know, on social media. Um, here, the statement says, NNPC Limited wishes to inform our esteemed customers that we have adjusted our pump and prices of PMS across our retail outlet in line with current market realities as we strive to provide you with quality service for which we are known. It is pertinent uh, to note that prices will continue to fluctuate to reflect market dynamics. Crazy. To a savage um, said that literally less than an hour back in Ninja and one of my car tires gone. Other car are now in the queue for fuel. Issue with electricity in my house. It's crazy, guys. <laughs> there was light all, all through yesterday. In fact, a lot of people in Nigeria now have solar. I wouldn't say a lot of people, but compared to before, they now have solar. So we don't really feel it except, you know, you use like big appliances and all that. Yeah, but apart from that, they've been electricity. They've been lied to since yesterday. And I'm like, or two days ago, seven. I'm like, what's in they happen? She not Tinubu because of it, Tinubu enter. I know if they take him now before we go see light again. <laughs> If it's like two or three days later, what well, Tiwasavi said, I'm logging off and going back to where I came from. <laughs> Understandable. Naira to pay for fuel. Oh God, me a big get driver. I'm not even paying five hundred naira. How much I go come the car? Why? I'm not even paying five hundred naira. What five fifty? What they talk? I'm not even paying because the price is too much. I bet my president Trumbo begin to do something about this price. Where they talk? I beg, I don't take God back to Numbu, make it do something. I don't dare yet since the day before yesterday. My wife way to drive my car so that I go feed the carry passenger. I know fit. I know fit. I, I, to, to buy water for us with three can. No way to buy water. All the poor people where they sell water, 2029. They said no water, sell, no way to buy to take on generator to pump the water. I never bath. Since yesterday, I never bath. You never you know my bath? You know that smell? You know that you smell? You know that you smell from my you, body? Wait, you just smell? I just smell! Then come out for ya. I, I want to come out one by Thank you, my brother. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. No, no worries. See this country, Nigeria. Let nobody deceive you. Nigerians are the ones doing themselves. Look, look. Just look at this lucky you. Just take a look. Just less than 24 hours. The president, he did not say he has removed subsidy. Yo. He just made an announcement that he will. All of a sudden, there's hike in food prices. All of a sudden, there's hike in fuel price. Q since 6 a.m. in the morning. Everybody's trying to buy fuel. Nobody said the fuel no day, the fuel day. But our people is hoarding the fuel. Hoarding it, hiking the prices up to make things difficult for our fellow Nigerians. And yet you complain. You, you have mouth to complain. Tinibu is the problem. Buari is the problem. Have you thought about yourself? Nobody should deceive you. You are the ones doing themselves. You have no law for your fellow neighbor. You don't have law for the person. No opportunity where you go there, where you go take chop from the next person. That's what you need. Because I don't understand how fuel will go from a hundred and something naira to five hundred and something naira. Until we change our own orientation. I don't see how this country is going to move forward. Because even if they bring Jesus to come and lead us. <laughs> even if jesus decides to come and lead us nigerians will still make things difficult for him and it's just what it is uh, of nnpc here in abuja located at zone one you see and as i can as you can see um will just zoom to the price 
on the billboard. It's 537 wow. naira per liter for petrol, while diesel goes for 740 naira per liter. That is the price up now on the board. Um, 5,000 naira for a no English. This is just quarter of 20 liters. Quarter. 5,000 naira for We are done in Nigeria. Yeah, Tinubu's daughter. You know, these people, my problem with them, the people that are with Tinubu, his families, I don't know. Some of his families do. Look at the daughter. Immediately, her father was sworn in. How declares herself Yaloja General of Nigeria just because the dad is now the president of Nigeria. What is all this nonsense? It was even David Undei that revealed that to everybody. I'm sure David Undei is like on this lady watching her and she did what everybody suspects that she was going to do. She did it. She's changed it to Yaloja General. Let's see if the president himself, Tinobu, will approve it. Then we know that we are done. We are really, really done using power. Now, moving on to the next one. Here is a lady, you know, that's a pregnant lady that caught her boyfriend with another girl in his house. guys <laughs> this lady in that was seen in that video fighting the other girl and he, she left that guy alone fighting the other girl then you're dumb if you're like this girl that fights your fellow girl just because your boyfriend cheated i think you deserve to be cheated on if you if you can't see the the red alert if you can't see you know the red traffic light glaring and i think generally if you want to fight something you fight it from the source the source is the person that cheated you fight how many girls are you going to fight if the person that cheated refused to change so how many girls do you want to fight i don't get but i see no sense in fighting the other person i see some some guys too fighting their fellow guy just because you know is is chatting with their girlfriend your girlfriend is the one you know that's allowing that to happen your girlfriend is the one that is willingly she wasn't forced to chat with that guy and who knows maybe your girlfriend is even emotionally attached to that guy than you you let her go you don't fight a guy because of a girl like your own guy because of a girl <laughs> there's something i want to say but i think it might offend some people but yeah <laughs> let us move straight to the next one here is about um aruba um and damola Olatunji, the the actor you know i thought these two were actually married though like officially husband and wife so they were never married 
Well, the actress Bukola uh, has announced her separation from her husband, um, Damola Olatunji, earlier this year. This lady, you know, um, Bukola moved out of Olatunji's house due to alleged infidelity, although the actor denied the rumors in a statement posted on her Instagram page. Now, the lady clarified that she was never married to Olatunji. The couple has agreed to prioritize the welfare of, you know, their two children and ensure, you know, their well-being. She went on to express her wishes for Olatunji's continued blessings as usual. So this guy was busy in the com busy in the comment section fighting some of his um fans or some of Bukola's fans. Uh you can see uh, somebody here says uh, after he posted a video of him just enjoying himself, you know. <laughs> and somebody said here, I, I tell you, continue. They don't give you change uh, from your Abuja trip. Shall I go pay the twin school fees? Um, <laughs> Oluko giveaway. <laughs> that means somebody that have giveaway PP. <laughs> so he replied that person said, I'm not like your father. My kid's education is paramount. Another person here says, round two, who is next by, you like Big Bobby? And he replied, your mom, Abishi, no good. Abishi, no get Big Bobby. <laughs> it's crazy. But I always say this, you know, there are also um, good reports out there about marriages here. We have Francis Duru. Francis Duru, the actor, celebrates a 20th wedding anniversary with his wife. Yes, we should also uh include this in reports because these days we tend to just push you know the negative reports negative narrative about you know things like this out there whereas there are you know relationship marriages that are flourishing yes it's always difficult but they are actually you know stable and things are very very calm but yeah marriage is a beautiful thing except for uh, judy gallo's estranged wife sonia who said recently uh that if you like do monkey style you will end up like others i think this lady you know it's hard but i think she should move on i mean gallo is obviously having fun and it's crazy you know the ladies that with gallo has been linked with uh um are always ready to share um trips to you know beautiful places uh, they are just always ready to post videos you know of them with this guy so maybe that's getting to this lady the estranged wife they're working on their divorce i believe so or they are already done but they still describe her as a strange wife and i don't think they're finally divorced uh, whatever other women wants to do shouldn't bother her i think so it's not easy but she truly needs to move on unless she wants him back just saying though um moving on to the next one here we have um a video of is, is this our first let me ask this question is this how they do in a job a video of a bride who refuses to smile on her wedding day i mean she just stood there and continue or keep frowning till everyone in, in attendance empties their pocket they keep spraying her if she continues to frown uh frown her face for like an hour, they must, according to the culture, they must continue to spray money until she smiles. So tell me, is that true? Ijo people, we are the Ijos. Moving on to the next one here, we have um, Sheon Kuti. So Sheon Kuti, um, talked about how Femi Falano defended his father in the same court he was charged in. Let's let's watch this um, interesting moment uh, with Sheon Kuti. In 93, when I was still quite young, my mom took me to that same court to watch Uncle Femi defend my dad for murder. I was charged for murder in 93 and was in that same court. Uh, uh, fast forward some 30 years later, you know, he was defending me in the same court. You know, 
Vous savez, things don't come full circle. Things come full circle. Things come full circle. You know, that's a fun fact. So uh, that was that, that that was interesting to see. Uh, Uncle Femi also was the one that first introduced me when I was performing in Shrine. I don't know if anybody has seen that video before. You know, uh, Uncle Femi was introducing me at Shrine, you know, small boy with a big man sense. And I was singing Sorrow, Tears and Blood at that show. And for me, it was kind of prophetic in a way, you know. It was really prophetic because you know, the last talk for the song, when I say, enjoy, I know I won't go. Ah, the, so policeman go slap your face, you know, go talk. The army man go whip your yash, she go, they look like donkey. Rhodesia, they do them own our leaders, they are for nothing. South Africa, they do them own. Them leave sorrow, tears, and blood. Them regular trademark, them leave sorrow, tears, and blood. I, you know, listen. <laughs> listen. Prophecy, fam. Prophecy. So, I will give that on my gist. Before we go on, first day was difficult in prison. First day was difficult. Sir, police cell, I don't want to go to prison. Now, cell, I still did. You know, actually, I was in, I was in police station. I did for cell. I did lock up. You know, they don't, they don't demand me go kiri kiri or anything. But here, say for kiri kiri, you know, they let us out all day, and at night to go inside. You know, but for that fucking police station, they just keep you locked down all day. All night, they're just locked inside this room with no light, like 30 something people in three man cell. You know, crazy. The heat, eh? Hey! The heat and the smells. Oh my God. But like after two days, I got used to it. Like, you know, like, it just became routine. It can't be like routine. And I can't even read my book. Now, first rumor to despair. Is that just want to be going astray? Are you advocating for them to lock me up? Lock me up? I seem to say, now me don't do the thing. We was but listen. I know at least three celebs from Nigeria. We get felony charge. Felony. My own a misdemeanor charge. I get. Whether you know. They talk like say the heavens is falling and thunder is clapping. My charge is still misdemeanor. You know, if we are going to be just and to follow assaulting a police officer, it's a misdemeanor. You know, that's the charge I have. But felony charges, fraud, assault, rape. If people come online and you fight for these people and you support felony charge, felony charge, fam. Real criminal, felony shit, felonious behavior. Ah, ah. What did I do? What, what did I see? They don't invite the police into my life. They study me up. They storm me up. Say, ah, Nigerian police. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> they carry my life up like this. They turn my life upside down. They shake her, shake her, shake her, shake her. Nah. Even one seed of Ibo don't drop. Now they say, that time they say, fear me. <laughs> say they shake, they don't even see one seed, but they shake all my life. Fear me. They say, the guys fear me. Say, okay, you are an upstanding, upright, you are an upright citizen. You are an upstanding citizen of this country. <laughs> As they carry me go back from my house, after they go search me, they hit some guy, boss, you know, a bus driver moving with, Bam! I see the hitting boss too. The guy just looks in the police. He just stay inside the car. He just sit inside the car. He didn't even come down. He didn't say anything. They go with them. They don't come down. They don't go tell her sorry. They don't do anything. They don't do the I just look behind this. I just look behind the there because you know they wear me handcuff. But you know they don't they don't they forget to cover my mouth. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> they forget to cover my mouth. <laughs> so I just look the guy say, ah, ah. So that's what we call of us BRB. And I would just bash my car. We just say that we don't spare just to go. I mean, that's how you want everybody to be. I mean, hmm, you know. Anyway. Okay, guys, moving on to the next one over here. This person shared this. Uh, I said, my four-year-old daughter keeps telling mysterious stories about her past life. Wow. Okay. It says, my first daughter happens to live with her mom. And I only get to see her like once a week or less. I've noticed that whenever she talks to me on the phone, she uh, talks like an adult. She says things only an experienced person would say. For example, she called me to buy three cakes for her birthday and questioned why. Um, she said um, because the last time I bought her cake was for her first birthday and I have to buy for all the years I did not buy. Recently, I asked her, who is God? And she said, God is a spirit that lives in heaven and is on the water. And he created everything from the water. She na mami water na be this girl. Even though this sounds like incoherent and funny, I don't expect such answer from a four-year-old girl. Today, I called her to myself um, and asked her what of her mom. And she answered, which one? I was shocked. I proceeded to ask her, how many mom does she have? And she said, my mom dies long time ago. And this one is her second mom. I was shocked to the bone. She now banged. So I separated her from her siblings and asked deeper questions, even though I didn't want her to feel scared. She also told me she had two, she had two other siblings and called their names, told me where she lived before, and <laughs> she told me where she lived before, and this is where I stopped. I've always wanted to believe in reincarnation, and this is proof before my very eyes i think another person actually confirmed that things like this happen for real they commented they said um oh this reminds me of my last baby when she started talking she would tell me how she has a mother who sent her to me to take care of she would tell me about her other brothers at a point i was scared and would pray to god to forgive me because i tried aborting her cause was already done with childbirth when i'm sad she will wipe my tears and tell me how her mother will not like to see me cry hmm. at a point i started asking her about her mom and her brothers she will tell me how they love me she will be six six soon and i don't hear her talking about it again wow Another person here says, my daughter said she's from China, that she came to me because I wanted a baby. And she knew, why wow, all of them, daughters, 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 knew I would take care of her because her parents did not love her. So she died and came to me. She said this when she was four. And if I ask her now, she repeats same words. I always ask her if I'm treating her well. And she will say, yes. Wahala. Hey, so this thing people are actually confirming this is happening to people different people they are sharing their own stories another person here says ah god i'm not alone because my four to five year old daughter was um, beginning to scare me she keeps saying she has plenty brothers and plenty sisters ah is this really happening for real in her village village she went last last at two and will start calling some names as her sisters and i will keep shouting god forbid i've warned her that the only siblings she has is her sister but she will still come around to say same thing and even put them in her prayers jesus jesus is lord is like she even once said something about another mother or so hey i just hope it's a phase that will pass god i beg ah ah the many stories here this one even said i've witnessed one my auntie child wow a lot of people wow 
okay guys that's where i'm going to hold it thank you so much for watching uh guys don't forget to like this video subscribe if you're yet to do so until we see you next time peace